dropper seat posts are without doubt one of the best inventions to come out of mountain biking in the last few years. What's even better now is that there's actually a range of very affordable dropper posts. At one point they used to be quite expensive, you're talking like a couple of hundred quid, couple of hundred dollars, whereas now they can be had from just above a hundred pounds. I've been testing a pair of these, namely the RSP Plummet and the KS E10. The KS costs £125 in this uh, externally routed remote format and the RSP Plummet costs £115. First things first, neither of these posts is very light. That's part of the reason why other posts such as uh, Fox Transfer or RockShox Reverb, that's why they cost so much money because it's very hard to make a product that's tough enough to be a seat post that's also light at uh, an affordable price point. Both of these posts tip the scales at over 700 grams with the KS being marginally heavier. The other compromise that you have to make with these cheaper dropper posts is on cable routing. On more expensive posts, uh, for example again a reverb, that comes with stealth routing so the cable or rather the remote hose actually terminates at the bottom of the post and it's piped all the way through your frame until it pops out the handlebars. It's all neatly hidden away. With both of these they still have a remote but it's actually routed externally so it comes from usually on both of them from the top of the head uh, and then there's a big loop of cable uh, and then you can maybe route that through your frame or you have to zip tie it to your frame. The problem with this is whichever way you do it you're still going to have a big loop of cable um, especially once you put the post down that loop will be compressed it can catch on things, it can rub on your legs, it can rub on your frame. It's a bit of a faff, it's a bit of a compromise. Another place where you're limited is in overall travel. Both of these posts are the cheapest remote posts that either Chaos or RSP do and they both only have 100 millimetres of travel. That's actually quite noticeable when you're on the bike, especially when you compare to some sort of modern drop posts which have up to 150 millimetres of travel. That means that you have to make a compromise, either that you want your saddle fully out of the way, which means that it's gonna be a little bit too low for pedaling properly, or you have it so you've got a good pedaling height, but then it's not quite as out of the way as you want maybe when you're descending. I've got to say, in practice, this wasn't the most noticeable thing about these posts. The bigger issue is actually the quality of the travel and how smooth they are. With the KS in particular, it had a very sluggish and slightly squelchy return to speed, which compared to some of the faster posts on the market is very noticeable. You have to hang around with your thumb on the remote for a long time before the saddle comes all the way up, instead of just being able to hit it, bang it up, and then you can carry on, or do the same thing, hit it, squish it down, and then you can go. These are definitely more sluggish. Out of the two of them, the RSP is definitely the better one. The other thing I didn't like about the KS post was the clamp head for the saddle. It uses a single bolt, uh, which means it's not as tough, and that also means that it's not as adjustable as, say, a twin bolt micro-adjust item, which the RSP is. The other issue is that it's actually a layback post, so it's got, I think, about three quarters of an inch of layback, which means that your saddle's offset further. I really noticed that on my bike. It definitely put the saddle much further over the rear axle, which means it's a bit of a pain in climbing, and you can only bung your saddle so far forwards on the rails to compensate. Of course, as you'd expect from the price, when it comes to the finish, both of these posts are a little bit rough and ready. It's not particularly nice anodizing, nothing's particularly smoothly finished, but when you consider what you're getting for the cost, I don't think that's too much of an issue. More of an issue is the remote. On the KS, I'm not a huge fan of their uh, little button remote. It's actually quite hard to get your hand to. Uh, when you're on the bar, you have to kind of lift your thumb up and over onto the bar to press it. Um, the RSP's remote is a little bit better. I mean, there's quite a lot of side-to-side -side slop in, but it's actually much easier to reach when you need it. On the plus side for the KS post, it is actually available in the 27.2mm diameter, as well as the more common 309 and 316 That means that if you've got an older style frame, especially a hardtail, you can still fit this post in, which is something that's not possible with the RSP. That only comes in 30.9 and 31.6. However, like I said, I'd rather wait for the stealth version, uh, which is also going to come with more travel. It's going to be 125 millimeters. Uh, and the best thing of all, it's not going to cost any more money. Of course, if you're in the States, then RSP being Rally Special Products, you won't be able to buy this specific post, but I'm pretty sure you can get one that looks very, very similar to it, probably for a very similar price that might not be branded the same. cost was holding you back from getting a drop post, then these are the solution. Okay, they're not perfect, they're not particularly refined, they're not very nice to look at, and they're not very light, but I reckon the advantages of having a drop post on your bike far outweigh any of those sorts of things. So if you've not given one a go, now's the time to try it.